and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every year when I was growing up, my sisters and I were drugged. I mean drugged to the Klingle family reunion. My father's mother was the second eldest of seven children, and all of her siblings were, shall we say, rather prolific. So there were masses of people who gathered in these different township halls in Marion County, Ohio. And these are places where, this is the first time I ever saw a, two, a two-seater outhouse. I mean, I'm telling you. <laughs> well, there were masses of people, most of whom I had no idea who they were. You know, it, it was amazing into that. You know, you, you've heard the old saying, you can choose your friends, but you can't choose your relatives. But that's exactly what family reunions are all about. Family unions, or family reunions, is the bringing together of people who have a common heritage. Whether they agree on everything, whether they even like each other or not, which is a whole other sermon, is beside the point. Today is All Saints Sunday. And today we are at a reunion of sorts with all of God's adopted family. In fact, that may be just what the writer of Revelation had in mind when he wrote our first reading today. He wrote, after this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne. And then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these? And where have they come from? Who are these, and where have they come from? Sounds like the Klingel family reunion to me. For me, All Saints Sunday is a reunion of God's family, a, a time to pull out the old photograph album, a day to look at who we are as a family of faith, a day to look at all of our adopted brothers and sisters in Christ, a day to, to acknowledge that the saints of God are a pretty diverse group. So now, let's take out that photograph album and let's look at some pictures of the Christian family that we are all a part of. Now, some of the pictures are faded, but thank goodness somebody wrote down all the names on the back of the photographs. First of all, we have a photograph of St. Peter. Now, I'm sure you've all heard stories about Peter and his bad temper. I mean, one night he even took a sword and cut off a guy's ear. And poor Peter, he never did get that smell of fish off of his hands and clothes. Now, next to Peter is a photograph of Paul. Kind of looks kind of short and fat and dumpy and has really dirty hair. <coughs> The guy always seems to complain about being sick, called it a bore in his side. He always said that Paul was um, different. Oh, oh, here's a picture of St. Francis with all the animals. And, and you know, besides being such an animal lover, he was a kind of an embarrassment to his family. You know, you know, remember the time he took off all of his clothes and he rolled around in the snow? And he didn't even take a sauna first? <laughs> I knew the students would get that. Here we go. He said he did it to, to clear out the, the evil thoughts from his mind. Oh, 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 and here's Martin Luther. Kind of looks like St. Paul, doesn't he? Kind of, kind of weird also that you know, Luther had physical problems all of his life. Only for Martin Luther, it was constipation. Maybe that's why he drank so much beer. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, and right beside us, a picture of that great American Lutheran pastor, Henry Melchior Willenberg. During colonial times, he was a pastor of three congregations that were 20 miles apart from each other. There were no cars, so Willenberg had to travel on horseback. All these people, all these people are part of God's family. And as we say in our creed, I believe in one holy Catholic, one universal church, the communion of saints. Now, 
I know you're probably thinking that you have to be dead in order to be considered a saint. So that's a mistake. The reality is that all of us, all of us here who have been baptized, we are already saints. In baptism, we are adopted into God's family. That means that there are saints everywhere. They're all over the place, living and dead. And it's not a matter of being good or doing good. Once we are baptized, it's all the credentials that we need. We are now, under our baptism, we are all part of one humongous family reunion. The Holy Universal, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. As the writer of 1 John said so well, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is exactly what we are, each and every one of us. We are children of a loving God. Oh, we don't have to wait for that love either. We don't have to wait for that love. We have it right now. See, being a saint is not something that we will be after we die. Or we can be if we try, just try hard enough. That first John makes it crystal clear. We have all the credentials that we need right now. We are the beloved children of God right now. Think about that. Think about that and place that on your heart. We are called as Christians to be what we are right now. So knowing that, do the Beatitudes for the Gospel today sound any different to you? Blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers. Open your hearts, my brothers and sisters in the faith. Open your hearts and read between the lines. And if you do, then maybe you'll hear, hear this. You will hear that you are loved. So act like it. That you are redeemed. So act like it. That you are a saint. So act like it. Jesus began to speak and he used the Beatitudes to make it as simple as he could. He said to us, be what you are. Be children of God. And you will be blessed with every breath that you take. Because blessedness simply means fullness of life within the family of God. Yes. Today is All Saints Sunday. So until the next family reunion, remember first and foremost that being a saint simply means belonging to God. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be famous. You don't even have to be dead. All you have to be is simply who you are, a redeemed and baptized child.